Hello BookTube! Today I'm going to be doing the I used to do that tag. This tag was created by Mark of Booktime with Elvis and I saw it on his his original video so I'll leave a link to his original video in the show notes down below. Uh, prompt number one. What did you used to do like have in the following topics that you don't do like have now? Uh, so the topics are books and reading, leisure and travel, social, food, sport, hobbies and activities, work and toys. Um, for books and reading, um, largely that is comic books. Um, I was for about eight years or so uh, from about eight to 16 I was rather heavily into comic books um, mainly the um, Marvel and DC I got my first comic book when I was about eight might have been seven uh, we were going to visit my grandparents for Thanksgiving or Easter or maybe a Christmas or uh, my grandparents wedding anniversary and my mom stopped at a little uh, convenience store and bought me and my brother a comic book um, it was either I want to say the first comic book I ever had was an issue of Conan the Barbarian although it could also have been an issue of G.I. Joe I was a huge fan of both Conan and G.I. Joe when I was uh, younger and Slowly from there, I started to build up a bit of a comic book collection. Um, uh, it was in the late 80s and early 90s, well, early 90s, uh, when comics could still be found on uh, newsstands in convenience stores and grocery stores and even some bookstores. Uh, gradually, through the 90s, uh, you could no longer, um, these stores no longer carried comics. Uh, comics only uh, could be found, particularly the individual floppy issues, could only really be found in comic book stores. And fortunately, uh, at the optometrist, uh, it was in a little strip mall, there was a comic book store that was a few storefronts down. And so when me and my brother would go get new glasses, um, we would, pretty much while the glasses were being readied, me and my, my mom would take me and my brother to this comic book store and we would browse and we would pick up some comics. And that was how we got our comics for a few years. Uh, there was also a Toys R Us used to have um, little boxes or um, little plastic bags of random comics too. That's how I got uh, the complete first part of the Nightfall Saga and a few others I think. And then this was in the mid 90s uh, and the comic book bubble burst uh, during this time period. Uh, a lot of earlier comics were selling for tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars and investors saw dollar signs in new comics. And so the comic book companies thinking ahead, um, I mean seeing dollar signs themselves, started to print more and more comics, including special editions, um, variant covers, that sort of thing. And then the investors realized that uh, you actually need scarcity for value. And so when they realized that the comics that they'd been investing in were not worth a whole lot more than what they, the retail newsstand price up for them were, they kind of bailed out, which left hundreds or thousands, well, hundreds and th hundreds and th of thousands of copies of comics unsold, which 
while not necessarily hurting Marvel or DC because of how um, the market had evolved to that point, it did leave the comic book stores royally screwed and thousands of comic book stores um, closed. Now, the comic book store that me and my brother went near the um, optometrist uh, did end up um, moving and changing its business. Instead of selling comics, they started to sell um, card gaming. So, we no longer went there. And the only other real comic book store in Waco uh, is located rather far away from, I mean, it's not a terribly convenient trip to go there. Um, at the time, it was a rather bad part of town, and while Waco's gentrified significantly in the 20 years since, it's still inconvenient to go. Um, so we only ever went there a few times, and I've gone a few times since, and it looks a lot nicer now than it used to, but it's still the trip. So gradually, by my mid to late teens, I had largely gotten out of comics, because it wasn't terrible. It wasn't convenient to go to the one local comic book shop, and I couldn't be. I couldn't get any new or back issues. So, when I was 16, I decided to wrap up my collection and uh, gift it to a friend of my brother's. Uh, but I'd always regretted it. Um, I think getting rid of my comic book collection was one of those things I do that. I get rid of everything that's kind of displeasing me or that's annoying me or something and I just I get rid of all of it and then I regret it and I regretted getting rid of my comic book collection and it took a few years till I was about 23 and I was in San Francisco and luckily as luck would have I mean I never quite got out of uh, paying attention of looking to see what was going on in the comics but when I was uh, in San Francisco I discovered that there was a comic book store on the Castro and the Castro was in walking distance or I could take the subway the public transportation anyway so I went to that comic book store in the Castro a few times picked up, I think, um, an issue of, I think it was the first volume of Young Avengers uh, by Heinberg and Chung, or, yeah, uh, an issue of Ultimate X-Men, and I think an issue of Ultimate Spider-Man. I think I might have picked up some a Batman issue, too. I could be wrong about that, but anyway. So that kind of started a new baby comic book collection uh, that petered on and off until um, I decided to kind of get rid of that collection about seven years ago. And I haven't had any, I haven't owned any American comics since then. Um, if I want to read superhero comics, I like I um, pretty much checked them out from the library. Or now I use um, Kindle Unlimited. There are some uh, free ones there. Although I would like to get back into comics again, but I mean it's just so expensive and um, really like trying to find the comic book shop because that's where they're sold at. And of course, there's a whole thing about um, e -com reading comics on e-readers that's kind of blown up in the last about few months. So anyway, so it's comics. And so moving on to um, other uh, parts of this question, leisure and travel. No, I not nothing that I. I've done that I used, I don't, uh, except for 
Like, I don't really go anywhere because of the pandemic, but I never really went anywhere anyway, so. Uh, social, uh, not so much there. Food, um, fast food. I have really gotten out of um, fast food. I much, much prefer making my own food now. Um, it's so much more fun and so much more like controlling what goes in, the portions, that sort of thing. Because there's a, because one of the few foods that we had, uh, me and my mom had gotten as takeout was fried fish. And the amount of fish and sides that uh, the coffee shop, um, one of the restaurants here in McGregor, uh, make they it's like such a I mean the portions are out of control it's like I mean cause we could share a um, plate <sighs> so because basically like since I've started cook, uh, frying fish myself um, it's basically one or two fillets is good and there can occasionally be left over so okay sport hobbies and activities um i don't really watch any well except for football american football i don't really watch any sports anymore i used to watch uh soccer occasionally and i would sometimes catch a basketball game and i even tried to get into hockey um but i kind of want to focus here on x games um, X Games are uh, skateboarding and BMX riding and motocross, that sort of thing. Um, I got into them in about 10 or so years ago. And I would watch like the X Games and the um, various other competitions that sometimes occasionally appeared on television, or woefully few. Uh, particularly skateboarding and BMX. I really enjoyed those too competitions and I would catch every X Games um, I could particularly I the one year when there was like uh, three or four X Games there was like X Games in Los Angeles and then there's one in Brazil one in Germany and it was just an amazing year for X Games but I've gotten out of um, it's been about six or seven years since I've really paid much attention to the X Games um, I think it was the first or second Austin X Games that I kind of dropped out of paying attention to X Games, which I kind of regret now. I do enjoy them. Okay, hobbies. I don't think there are any hobbies or other activities that I've kind of dropped. Um, work. Uh, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> in toys oh gi joe uh when i was younger or toys in general but definitely focusing on gi joe uh, me and my brother were huge uh gi joe fans when we were kids we had a pretty sizable collection of gi joe through to the mid 90s when kind of gi joe went through one of its um doldrum periods uh they weren't making that much money for Hasbro, so Hasbro sort of temporarily retired the line. And so they stopped selling them in like thrift stores or dollar stores and stuff. So, and the G.I. Joe's themselves aren't very sturdy. They kind of break apart because um, the two parts of a G.I. Joe, the torso and the leg part, are held together by a rubber band and those rubber bands will break. There are many, many G.I. Joes that me and my brother broke. And some not necessarily all of them because of the rubber band snapping. I melted Cobra Commander once <laughs> on a lamp. <laughs> but it's been a year since, well, it's been about... Mm, 25, 30 years since I've really played with toys.
Anyway, moving on to question number or prompt number two. Has doing this tag made you think you might want to do uh, to revisit some of your old hobbies, activities, etc.? Yeah, I mean, well, this and of course, a few weeks ago, I did a hobbies tag where you could talk about your hobbies. And like talking about my comic, old comic book collection has kind of got me wanting to get back into it. I'm I'm feeling that desire um, and I have gotten back into comics in some way um, although in this case it's manga Japanese comics um, I had a small manga collection uh, about 10 or so years ago that I got rid of and I've in the last six months or so, well near on six months I pretty much gotten back into manga in a big way but I, I would like to get back into comics um, and also maybe watching some sports X games that sort of thing too question number th or prompt number three are there any new hobbies activities etc you would like to try in the future so as I mentioned in my hobby tag um, there are two I would like to um, try my hand at um, comic book style illustration. Um, uh, one of my hobbies is writing and there are two of them, or at least two of my projects more like three or four that I think work best as comics that I just I don't see how I can make them novels or even a series of novels I don't particularly care for that um, so I mean writings one thing but comics also need art and so I have often thought about uh, trying to get into uh, comic book drawing and illustration um, which would be a fun challenge because while I do some art um, I paint with pastels examples of my work um, I'm not terribly good at drawing so yeah would be something to try and I also would love to get into uh, patchwork quilting which is I love uh, watching patchwork, uh, like the look and feel of patchwork quilts and well the look I've never actually felt one but anyway you get the idea so yeah uh, prompt number four do you read many books related to your current hobbies interests sports etc I did read uh, recently American comics a history by Jeremy Dauber which was really good I've also read a few other books on comics in the last few years I wish there were more books on manga um, particular like critical history that sort of thing on manga I do read some art books, uh, cookbooks, because cooking's another hobby of mine. Uh, sports and stuff, not so much. Okay. Prompt number five. What are some YouTube channels you can recommend for your non-bookish hobbies? So, I'll focus on uh, art and cooking. So for cooking, I would recommend uh, the Babish Culinary Universe. It's an amazing uh, channel uh, headed by Stephen Ray. Uh, some, a lot of his videos are amazing. He focuses quite often on uh, food seen in film and television. Uh, just today, I watched um, a collaborator, Alvin Zhao, who does um, anime with Alvin, uh, make a... Uh, Katsudon uh, inspired by Yuri on Ice and uh, last week he did or maybe two weeks ago he did an episode inspired by Ichiraku Ramen from Naruto which was amazing so I would do Beverage Culinary Universe um, Food 52 they are amazing um, absolutely amazing uh, 
I haven't really watched Bon Appetit in a while. I'm still subscribed. Um, but I'm not quite as interested in what they do as I was. Um, and a lot of the newer uh, chefs they've brought on since 2020 don't really... I don't know. But anyway. But I mean, Bon Appetit's cool too. Uh, some of the former Bon Appetit uh, chefs, uh, Claire Sappitz, Carla Lally Music, recommend them. Uh, I think that's it for food. Uh, for art, there's uh, the Pastelist, uh, Painting Lessons with Marla, um, Karen Margulis, Bethany Fields, Emma Colbert. Um, also for acrylic painting, there's the Art Sherpa and her mother, Ginger Cook. And um, for comic art, uh, there's um, David Finch, who I love his Monday Night Draws. They are amazing. Um, I'm probably, I don't know if I'm going to list all of them in the show notes, though, because that would be a bit excessive. And I'm kind of running out of time. So, anyway, and prompt number six. Feel free to add or remove any of the topics mentioned, and please tag some people. Thanks. So, generally when I do tags, um, I tag everybody, so I'll tag everybody. If you would like to do this tag, consider yourselves tagged, and I will see you tomorrow with either another tag video, or maybe a reaction video, or maybe a manga video. One of the three. So until then, BookTube, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.